Welcome to this deep dive. Um, today we're going to be exploring mindfulness and meditation. You've given us some really awesome sources that like go deep into these practices and how they can, you know, help us manage stress and and just improve our overall well-being. So let's get started. Yeah, let's jump right in. I can tell from the sources that you're really looking to go beyond just a surface level understanding of this stuff. You've got material here that digs into the science, the practical techniques, and even the potential for like some serious personal growth. One of the things that really stood out to me was how much the sources emphasize the science behind how these practices actually reduce stress. It's not just like a feel good thing. It's like real changes happening in our bodies. That's right. And your sources really do a good job of explaining that. Like one study that's mentioned found that people who did mindfulness meditation for just 10 minutes a day had a 20% reduction in cortisol levels compared to the group that didn't meditate. Wow, 20%, that's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. And that's important because as your source points out, if your cortisol levels are high for a long time, that can lead to a whole bunch of health problems. So it's not just about feeling calmer in the moment, but actually addressing the root of a lot of those stress-related problems. Exactly. And what I find fascinating is that your source doesn't just tell us meditation reduces stress, it explains how. Mm -hmm. It uses this really cool analogy of our ancestors facing like physical threats. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And it shows how our bodies still react in that same way to stress, even though most of the time we're not in any real danger. Totally. Like our fight or flight response was super important back then, but now it seems like everything triggers it. Work deadlines, traffic, even just seeing a notification on my phone. Yeah, it's crazy, right? And the sources connect this to modern life really well. One of them talks about how we're bombarded with information all the time, which puts us in this state of hypervigilance and keeps our stress response system going nonstop. Okay, that makes a lot of sense why we're all so on edge these days. Mm. So then mindfulness is like an antidote, helping us to realize when we're in that stress cycle and giving us the tools to break free. Precisely. Instead of just getting swept away by that automatic fight or flight reaction, mindfulness helps us pause and notice our thoughts and feelings. It lets us choose a better way to respond. So it's not about getting rid of stress completely. Yeah. It's more about learning how to handle it better. Right. You know, one of your sources puts it really well. Stress is inevitable. Suffering is optional. I like that. Mindfulness and meditation give us the tools to deal with the stress that's always going to be there without letting it take over. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So speaking of tools, I was really interested in the practical techniques that the sources talk about. Like, we get the benefits now, but how do we actually do it? How do we actually practice mindfulness and meditation? Well, the sources emphasize that it doesn't have to be complicated at all. Even just taking a few minutes to focus on your breathing can make a difference. Really? That sounds almost too simple. How does that even work? Well, the source explains that by focusing on your breath, you're bringing yourself into the present moment. Instead of getting lost in thoughts about the past or worrying about the future, you're paying attention to the feeling of each breath as you breathe in and out. So it's like a little mental vacation. Exactly. Uh -huh. And the best part is you can do it anytime, anywhere. You don't need any special equipment or anything. I like that. What about the body scan meditation? That's another one I was curious about. Kind of sounds like a mental massage. It is a bit like that. Okay. The sources describe it as a way to slowly bring your attention to different parts of your body, noticing any tension, tightness, or just any kind of discomfort. And the idea is to just notice those sensations without judging them. Right. It's all about being curious and accepting of whatever you're feeling in your body. This is all sounding really good. But, you know, starting anything new can be a little intimidating. So how do we actually make these practices stick? How do we make them a regular part of our lives? Well, your sources have some great advice for that. One thing they all seem to agree on is that you should start small. Even just five to 10 minutes a day is a good starting point, especially when you're first beginning. That makes sense, small steps. Okay. It's like with anything new you're trying to learn, you gotta start small. Exactly, and one of the sources actually suggests picking a specific time and place to do your practice, like making it part of your routine so you don't forget or skip it, you know, like, first thing in the morning, maybe during your lunch break, or even right before bed. So it's about finding that time yeah. and really making it a priority. What about those times, though, when your mind is just racing a million miles an hour? It feels impossible to, like, quiet those thoughts down. Oh, absolutely. That's totally normal. The sources talk about that, too. In fact, one of them compared the wandering mind to, like, a puppy that's still learning. Ooh, I bet. You gotta be patient and gently keep guiding your attention back to the present moment. It takes practice. 
It's not about forcing your mind to be completely empty, but more about noticing when you get distracted yeah. and gently bringing it back. Yeah, exactly. And your sources offer some good tips for doing that. One of them suggests focusing on the actual physical feeling of your breath. Like, really pay attention to how your belly rises and falls or how the air feels cool as it comes in through your nose. It's like you're giving your mind something real to latch onto instead of just letting it spiral out of control. Right. And if the breath isn't doing it for you, another source talks about focusing on sounds, just noticing the sounds around you. Could be anything, like birds chirping, the hum of the fridge, cars driving by. Turning those everyday things into a meditation. I like that. Yeah. And one source even mentions that as you get better at noticing sounds, you might start to hear even more subtle things that you never would have noticed before. That's pretty wild. Like you're training your ears to be more sensitive. What about when you get distracted during meditation, though? Like you know, you try to focus, but your mind wanders. It happens, right? Oh, of course. It's super common, especially at first. One of the sources stresses that it's not about beating yourself up when you get distracted. It's more about just noticing it and then gently bringing your attention back to where you want it to be. So being kind to yourself instead of getting frustrated. Exactly. Actually, one of the sources even says that those moments of distraction can be really valuable. How so? Well, it helps you understand your thought patterns better, like what your mind tends to get stuck on. It can help you become more self-aware. Oh, that's a good way to look at it. So instead of getting discouraged, you can actually learn something from it. Yeah, I think that's a good takeaway. Another thing that the sources talk about a lot is consistency. The more you practice mindfulness and meditation, the more you're gonna see the benefits. That makes sense, but how much practice are we talking about? Is it like going to the gym where you gotta put in a certain number of hours a week? Well, one of your sources talks about some research on this, and it actually shows that even just a few minutes a day can make a real difference. A few minutes? That doesn't sound so bad. Right. And another source emphasizes that it's not about being perfect. It's about just showing up regularly and doing what you can, even if it's just for a short time. Progress, not perfection. Okay, I like that. And I'm curious, you know, we've been talking a lot about stress reduction, but do the sources mention how mindfulness and meditation might impact other parts of our lives, like our relationships, our work, stuff like that? Definitely. The sources go into that quite a bit, actually. They suggest that mindfulness and meditation can have some pretty powerful effects on those areas of our lives, too. So it's not just about feeling calmer, but actually becoming more present and engaged in everything we do. Exactly. One source points out that as you become more aware of your own thoughts and feelings, you also start to tune in more to the thoughts and feelings of the people around you. That makes sense. It helps you develop more empathy and understanding. Exactly. And one source even says that mindfulness can make you a better communicator. Oh. Yeah, because when you're more present and focused, you're able to listen better and respond in a more thoughtful way, whether you're at work or just talking to friends and family. So it's about using that calmness we've been talking about to actually engage with the world around us in a better way. That's a great way to put it. And one source even highlights how mindfulness can help boost your creativity and problem-solving skills. By quieting the mind a bit, it gives those new ideas and insights a chance to come through. So it's like opening yourself up to new possibilities. I like that. And one source even goes as far as to say that as you continue practicing mindfulness and meditation, you might even start to find more meaning and purpose in your life. That's pretty powerful stuff. It sounds like mindfulness and meditation aren't just about dealing with the tough parts of life, but they can help us live better lives overall. Absolutely. Your sources suggest that these practices can totally change your perspective, helping you see the world in a whole new way and approach life with more clarity, compassion, and joy. This has been a really great deep dive, really insightful. But before we wrap up, I'm wondering if there's anything else from the sources that you want to highlight for our listener. You know, I think the main thing to emphasize is that mindfulness and meditation are a journey, not a destination. You're not trying to reach some perfect state of bliss or anything like that. It's really just about being willing to learn and grow and cultivate a more present and compassionate way of living your life. It really does seem like more than anything, it's that ongoing process of you know learning and growing that makes these practices so powerful. I agree. And one of the sources you picked actually uses this really beautiful metaphor. It talks about mindfulness as like a journey of coming home to yourself. Oh, wow. I like that. Yeah, it's about rediscovering that inner peace and wisdom that we all have inside. But we might have kind of lost touch with it because, well, life just gets so busy, you know? Absolutely. It's like it's not about adding something totally new, but remembering something we already have. 
Right. And another one of your sources talks about how mindfulness can help us really connect with the present moment, like appreciate those simple things that we usually just kind of take for granted. Like what kinds of things? Oh, you know, just the little things, like really tasting that first sip of coffee in the morning, feeling the warmth of the sun on your skin, or even just hearing people laughing around you. It's like slowing down enough to actually enjoy those everyday moments. Yeah, exactly. And one of the sources even suggests that appreciating the present moment like that can make you feel more grateful and content overall. That makes sense. It's like you're finding happiness in what's already there instead of always wanting more, more, more. I think that's a really good point. And that reminds me of something else that came up in your sources. The idea that mindfulness can help you become way more self-aware. Yeah, I remember reading about that. One source goes pretty deep on this, explaining how by paying attention to your thoughts and feelings and like the physical sensations in your body, you can start to see patterns. Like, are there certain habits or thought patterns that might be holding you back? It's like you're becoming more aware of what's happening inside, like all those thoughts and beliefs that are kind of running the show. Exactly. And the source even suggests that as you get to know yourself better in this way, you're more able to make choices that actually line up with what you care about most. Oh, that's interesting. So it's not just about quieting your mind, but also using that awareness to make better decisions in your life. Exactly. It's about becoming more intentional and less reactive. One source also talks about how this increased self-awareness can help you accept yourself more, including all those imperfections that make you, well, you. That's so important, especially these days where it feels like everyone's trying to be perfect all the time. It's exhausting. Totally. And another source mentions how this self-acceptance can actually spread to your relationships, too. Like when you're kinder to yourself, it's easier to be kind to others. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. You're breaking down those walls of judgment and being more open and understanding. Yeah. And one source even takes it a step further and talks about how this shift in perspective can lead to a greater sense of connection with everyone and everything around you, like recognizing that we're all part of something much bigger than ourselves. Wow. That's a really powerful thought. It's like mindfulness isn't just about personal well-being. It's about contributing to a more compassionate and connected world. Exactly. And one of the sources you chose actually describes mindfulness as a practice for peace peace within yourself and peace in the world. I thought that was beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, as we wrap up this deep dive into mindfulness and meditation, what's the one thing you hope our listener takes away from our conversation today? Honestly, if I had to choose just one thing, it would be to just be curious and open-minded as you explore these practices. It's not a competition, you know, you're not trying to be the best meditator in the world or achieve some kind of perfect state. It's really about taking those small steps, whether it's five minutes of mindful breathing, a quiet moment of reflection, or just making a conscious effort to be more present throughout your day. It's about the journey, not the destination. And trusting that even those small, consistent efforts can make a big difference in your life. Absolutely. Thank you so much for guiding us through this deep dive. It's been incredibly enlightening, and I'm sure our listener will get a lot out of it. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me.